Hey folks, this is Jason Lewis, the producer of the From the Shadows podcast. I just want to remind you about our website, fromtheshadowspodcast.com. We have a Facebook page. We would appreciate it if you like and follow. Also, join our discussion group on Facebook called After the Shadows. We have a Twitter feed. Please follow us on Twitter. It can be found at podcast underscore from. Follow us on Instagram at From the Shadows Podcast. We have a YouTube channel. Go to the search bar of YouTube and put From the Shadows Podcast and please subscribe to that channel. We are also on the Odyssey Radio Network and we can be found there at odyssey1.com. We are still on the traditional podcatchers that everybody loves to listen to us on. We get a lot of feedback, so please rate the podcast and communicate with uh, whether you're on Spotify, Stitcher, TuneIn, Apple Podcasts, Podbean, or Google Podcasts. We're there, and we appreciate it when you leave comments for us. We also have a Patreon page. It can be found at www patreon.com forward slash from the shadows you can receive books stickers coffee mugs and special content just for our patreon subscribers check it out for yourself and see what packages that we have to offer well that's all i have for you right now folks and thanks for being a part of the from the shadows podcast family so with that being said let's get this episode started all right, so so Howard, so last week you told the uh, you told a few. We kind of talked about a funeral. I did. I funeral, did. Yep. Yeah. Well, a funeral and, story. Yeah, a funeral story. We each had a funeral you know, story. We, okay. And I just wanted to, you know, we kind of talked about the pink pink nightgown that your grandma was. That was a hit, to. and I don't know why that was a hit. You said it was a hit with the with the. The audience or the viewers or whatever. Right? It was. We got a lot of a lot of a lot of response from that, but. The funny thing was, is I was so so. Of course, Christy heard uh, a little bit about it. You know, we're getting ready right. to go to work in the morning or whatever, and she goes, "You know," and I'm like, "I you, how funny it was about you dressing your grandma in a pink nightgown." And she goes, "Well, you know," I start thinking about that. She said that that was what they did a lot of times back in the you know couple generations ago because. They thought you were going, you know, to your eternal slumber. So they dressed you in your nightgown. And I didn't, I never realized. Well, I didn't that. know that, but I mean, that sounds a little fresher than just saying we went to Dillard's and it was the cheapest thing we found. <laughs> so <clears throat> maybe that's what I would say, right? Yeah. Like you were just like, that's what the, that's what your grandma wanted. That you're but just you one know, of cheapskates. Uh, yeah. Obviously she's dead and we can't discuss it, but. But I think she would be okay because there's a whole, you know, I I I I don't like to call them the greatest generation, right? Because mm-hmm. I think they they like everybody else. They had personal potholes and and things that you know they probably sh- wouldn't be proud of if they knew how they turned out right now. But of that ilk, those people. They took dying a little less serious than we do nowadays, right? I mean, think uh, about it. Kids yeah. can't even. I mean, kids can't even. I mean, I'm choosing my words while I'm on my other monitor looking at campers for sale. So let me minimize that. <laughs> um, anyhow, <laughs> sometimes when I drift off here, it's hard for me to formulate because I got three things going on. Um, these double monitors are going to be the death of me. Uh, don't worry, don't worry, we'll we'll bury you in a pink negligence. Just like opening, <laughs> just like deciding right there at the graveside, open her up. Those people, and, and maybe it's just people over 75 in general, right? Once you hit 75, your cares are a lot different than they are when you're 25, right? Oh, of course. So, yeah, so of course. you know, I don't want to cuss on this because I know we run a clean show, but they they just you know people seventy five over just don't give a shit right yeah because or they give they give less of one yes they sure. give less of one so hey let's open her up or hey 
She wants to be in pink. Let's put her in a night gown. I think she would be perfectly fine being being in that nightgown because you know why not, right? Even if it was a little racy. I remember, you know, I could tell fifty grandma stories, and I know we we're going to segue <laughs> into a funeral story in a second. But I'll tell you one of these stories. She called me one day and she said I was working sheriff's office, and she said, "You need to get over here. I'm going to give my house away." And I said, "Do what?" And she said, "You need to get over here." I'm going to give my house away. I said, who are you giving me my house away? And she goes, I want you to go find, and this is, I can't, I can't say, because I would be canceled immediately, exactly what she said, but she said, you go find me the nastiest, poorest African family, and I'm going to give them this house. And I said, well, I, I don't, know where I'm going to find one but why and what had happened is she had bought this little house in the early 70s and and this is the early 90s and the city had widened the street they would put a new curb and gutter and updated the sewer system and done some work and they widened the street and they took all the width out of her side of the block because they had the biggest yards does that make sense so it wasn't yeah, penalized, it wasn't, penalized her for having a nice yard. Yes. And then they, you know, they were supposed to, so they took three or four feet down. Um, this whole, this whole, these whole two, you know, this little two block street. And she had a bunch of flowers and she had, you know, for 35 or 40 years or whatever, she's worked in this yard. And then the city comes and cuts three foot off of it. They put a brand new, uh, curb and gutter through there and their idea of putting it back the way they found it was back dragging it with a bobcat having some 19 year old kid uh back dragging it with a bobcat and we put everybody's yards back together right so <laughs> that started <Yeah>. a <laughs> that started a fight and, and really the underlying problem was the people that lived in the neighborhood when she first moved there most of them were passing away and the people that were just replacing them were younger. They had cars that they wanted to park on the street. They had they had a lot of action going on, right? And she just wasn't used to it, right? Yeah. And the other flip side is that so so what happened is she went from having her grass cut every week. She, she refused to cut the front yard where the city messed it up. She wanted the city to come back, so she got into a little bit of a fight with the city over this little rinky dink yard, right? So the city's coming to her and saying, you need to cut that grass. Code enforcement guy says, you need to cut that grass. She says, screw you. You guys messed it up. You cut it. <laughs> now, anybody that's lived in any kind of city knows exactly where this is going. <laughs> okay. So I'd go over there and I'd cut her side yard and her backyard, but she wouldn't let me cut the front yard. You know, it come into a problem there. So anyhow... <clears throat> Somebody in the neighborhood called the city and the city code enforcement court, and that's that's there was their interaction. We got a complaint from one of your neighbors that you won't cut your front grass. It's got to be maintained less than six inches. You know, they got like a little, little yard oh, yeah. or whatever. Yeah. And her 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 solution to that was screw them. If they think I'm that bad, I'm going to give this house to a bunch of sharecroppers, and they'll see what a bad neighbor looks like. Oh God. Okay. Yeah. So that was her. That was that was her. <laughs> That was her. That was her craziness in her head. Uh, maybe it's the West Virginian or you know the feud. You people want a feud? Let's feud. But uh, I remember going to there one day, and she said these new neighbors had moved in, and she said, "Oh, you gotta get this lemonade they had. You gotta just try this." And it was Mike's hard lemonade. They had these got these young people, you know, they were in the turkey where they're out there drinking this hard lemonade. And they, they, no way, so they weren't selling it in a stand on the street. No, they, they were oh, just God. drinking it and they offered her one, I think, more of a joke. And hey, she has one. I'll bet I'll take another one. That was so good. It's got a little kick to it. <laughs> oh, nothing better than grandma uh, little tips. I tipsy. mean, just just yeah. Just craziness. Like I said, I could probably do ten shows, but what the, the the I had mixed emotion about telling you this next funeral story, simply because 
my dead great uncle Huey has, for various reasons, has a special place in my heart. And then I got to thinking, you know what? He wouldn't mind if 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 I told a story on him, right? He wouldn't mind because he's dead too, right? <laughs> well, we're sitting here talking about funerals, and and this is a side, is in the, you know, and I don't I don't want to scare anybody that that knows me or anything, but yesterday. Yesterday, a kid, a guy from my class I played high school football with, died from COVID. Okay, died from okay. COVID. His wife just died seven months ago. She had like can't I think she had brain cancer. You know, so this guy couldn't. You know, so some of the people in our class had you know brought to our attention there was a GoFundMe and you know some of us donated and. And so I got to talking to Todd, our buddy Todd. You know, it's been mm-hmm. on the podcast, and and his parents, yeah, trash truck, you know? tra- yeah, his parents have both you know passed away, and and I've never you know any funeral like my grandparents had all their funeral stuff, their expenses all taken care of, right? Okay, so I don't know how much a funeral costs. Let me spendy. Well, we're t- so we we're talking about what my our the guy we went to school with and. They thought maybe the funeral expenses might be about eight thousand dollars. I'm like, man, that that does lot. that sounds actually cheap. But go okay. ahead. Well, I thought it was expensive until Todd told me how much his parents' funerals cost. Now, I don't, I'm not, I don't want to throw the number out there, but it's a lot more than eight thousand dollars, and and I was blown away, like how you can spend tens of thousands of dollars on a funeral, you know, and you're talking about, you know, your, your grandma and now your uncle mm-hmm. and stuff. And they're, they got in there of a generation that just bury me in a pine box probably. Right. Well, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I, you know, I told you my grandma had this little old house she'd bought in, in the early seventies, 72, three, four, something like that. Her funeral, she had a prepaid deal. So as long as we stayed within the limits, you know, it was like a, it was almost like an insurance policy, right? I, I think her limit was, it was eight or 9,000 bucks, right? So as long as everything was taken care of, as long as we didn't spend more on that. And that was more than she had paid for the house she lived in. Oh my gosh. Well, I know, but it makes now sense. obviously but it makes 40 sense. years worth of inflation yeah, 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 on yeah. there, factored in or whatever, right? But, <laughs> but here was the thing. She would have died, you know, if she knew that that in theory this this prepaid funeral cost more than the house she had worked in a factory for twenty five years to pay for. You know what I mean? That's insane. That's insane. Yes. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Like, but I, you think, you know, is I've it too late for us? To, is it too late for us to get into the funeral home well, business? Well, you know. I've had the discussion with my my kids about my, you know, I just, I, you know, I plan on being cremated and, and sprinkled out. And, and especially when I lived in Minnesota, there was the Minnesota Cremation Society had a thing that if you joined it for $120, they guaranteed your cremation only cost a thousand dollars. You know what I mean? And, and, and I, I looked at, I told my, especially my oldest boy, cause he's old and, you know, he's kind of old enough to, especially then to talk to like this, but, I said I would rather see you take fifteen or twenty thousand dollars to Vegas and piss it away, than put, spend it on burying me. <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? Yeah. Why not? Or uh, or a Mediterranean cruise, or a uh, or a uh, trip to Hawaii, or something than a hole in the ground. So yeah. I guess we're not. I guess the funeral directors aren't going to sponsor us, but <laughs> I, I was telling you, Uncle Huey made a fortune. And digging, Buried digging. And, yeah, and I'm digging, gonna tell you yeah. what a fortune. Now you're out there. Ohio's a little more expensive than us, but before he died, he owned over a thousand acres, and okay. out of that thousand, eight hundred and fifty of it was tillable. So that Ooh. means something to you, right? <laughs> In today's okay. dollars, that's, that's about so, eight nine I, million bucks. <laughs> we we were telling a story. We were telling a story the other day, or somebody was telling me a story. Because I, I said, how did he end up with the farm? Because the, the quote, the family farm, 
uh, you know, how did he beat ten, nine or ten siblings out? And I had an uncle say, well, he was the only one that had any money. They said, what happened is when, 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 when I say grandpa, it'd be great grandpa. When he died, she, grandma decided she was going to move to town and she asked all 11 of them who, you know, basically offered it to all 11 of them. Okay. And he was the only one that could afford it at the time or whatever, or had the money or wanted to probably fair was, you know, a lot of those kids, they, they live, it took them 20 years to get off the farm. They ain't going to go back to it. Does that make sense? <laughs> oh yeah. Back in them yeah. days, you know, they didn't want yeah. nothing to go back. You know, there was nothing good <laughs> to go back to, you know, there's an old adage. Sometimes it takes you 20 years to get off the farm and 40 to get back on it. Meaning <laughs> once you leave, it takes you 40 years to be able to afford another one. <laughs> so they tell me that she offered great grandma, be my great grandma, offered it to all of them. And he was the only one that could afford it. So he bought the whole thing at whatever the appraised value is. So she had, you know, I don't know how much they figured she had a lot. So, and she lasted about five years and then she died. And they had a reading of the will immediately following her funeral. So I said, what do you mean? They said, well, that was part of the deal. When they they lowered her down. Oh boy. And we all went back to the, I don't think it was the church. I think it was the funeral home and there was going to be a formal reading of the will. And I said, I've never heard of the thing. And they said, yeah, that's the way the old timers were because that just, that settles it right then. You know what I mean? They don't, people don't have time to hear a rumor or think something or is that make sense? You know what I mean? No yeah. time to fight. Yeah. yeah. It, 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 it gets red. Have you ever heard such an animal like that? No, it's usually a couple of weeks later, or a month. It got to go. Then it got to go through court and stuff. Yeah, I don't know probate and stuff. I mean, well, you right? don't go to probate if you have a will. I don't think you would. You should ask the judge. But I, anyway, so no. so this is what my uncle tells me. This is in in the, I think eighty seventy nine or eighty. I don't remember. They you know they were trying to they were trying to figure out when exactly it was. So they all convened back to the funeral home and and all of them have expectations right all, yeah. all of them have expectations so remember a couple weeks ago I told you, you had one uncle with the big crank that was married to the black woman yeah, yeah. he wasn't even mentioned it. so there was a couple of them out of these 11 <laughs> kids there was a couple of them that weren't even mentioned <laughs> okay okay so one of those deals where yeah, so some of them weren't even mentioned, but so what? I guess she, in her own words, and they had scribed down or whatever each kid, or you know what I mean, the kids that were mentioned. So a couple of them got a thousand dollars a piece, which you know in the late seventies I guess was money, right? Yeah, yeah. The, she had a house that was paid for, a, a Chevy Impala that was paid for. And she had the money from selling the farm that was paid for. She had a little money, but, you know, it wasn't like they were fighting over the the Hope Diamond or something. But she'd yeah. give a couple of them $1,000. So my uncle's telling me the story, and he's just talking about how people are looking around, like waiting for the next shoe to drop. Does that make sense? So they're looking around at each other. So she says... So and so, and she na named three or four of the real prosperous ones. Oh, and I forgot to say, in her funeral arrangements, she had a very basic funeral thing, right? Very, very basic. I'm going to be laid next to the, to my husband, just as just, just as basic as you can, okay? But Huey, the had made so much money in the funeral business, they said, "Oh my God, he he got this this crazy custom." like engraved casket it had a giant obelisk you know like uh <laughs> gravestone the grave grave, was just a... just all this stuff i guess just all this stuff this little old country church down there was filled full of flower arrangements just uh, just off the hook stuff so 
they went back to the same church surrounded with all his flowers and crap to read this will. And she said, so-and-so, you get a thousand bucks. So-and-so, you get a thousand bucks. She named off three or four, Huey being one of them. You guys have done so well for yourselves. You don't need nothing. And give the house to the baby girl and and the car to somebody else or something like that. So, because... <laughs> So they said the, the the half a dozen that were that done well and basically got read right out of it, right? <laughs> they were mad because they done so well because they made good life choices where the kids that got the money, she gave it to them because they needed it because they made bad life choices. Does that make sense? Or maybe their choices weren't as solid or whatever, right? <laughs> exactly, yeah. And he said they got in such a fight over at the funeral home before it was all said and done you he turned around and build the estate for the fan all this fancy <laughs> junk. he had copped it thinking it was his own money does that make sense because he was going to get a, a tenth i don't know what he thought he was going to get but he was so mad they got in such a feud at the funeral that he he, he billed him for it <laughs> and i said i can't believe it and he goes don't matter they didn't pay him they stiffed him <laughs> Because what we were saying is how some of them didn't talk or whatever. And, and my uncle said, well, some of them were still mad from grandma's funeral. I said, my God, when was it? They saw 80, 79 or 80. And they're still mad. Uh, well, because they got that bill. They got that, they, get get it, they got that bill hold, you know, hold, being held over their heads. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. My God. So funerals, I mean, I they just they me off the hook, I guess. You know? I, does it make you wonder what yours is gonna be like? <laughs> I you know, I went to my aunt's about six months ago and uh I don't even know how to say this, but I had a hell of a good time. <laughs> and, uh, I think you just said it. I think you just said it. <laughs> I, I don't know. I was to say it, but I mean, I, I, I not, uh, you know, it was a bad time for her passing and all that. And, and, but, but it, we, uh, I, I sat in the back, I took a couple of my, I took my kids and, um, and, uh, I had a great, t- I mean, other than the fact it was my aunt's funeral, I had a great time. I mean, uh, Things happened and transpired, and and we went out to eat afterwards, and it turned into a it turned into a, a great time. But well, I think it's I think it's because you guys didn't read the will right afterwards. Well, she didn't. Have, I mean, <laughs> we are all so prosperous. This generation is so prosperous that that uh, <laughs> she left it all to the church. That or I, this what happens is when your grandpa's got eleven brothers and sisters, and your dad's got thirteen. Okay, that hog's been cut up so much. I mean, you ain't even going to get fat left. I mean, it's gone. I mean, it's, I mean, shit is all left of that pig, you know? <laughs> Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of the From the Shadows podcast. Until next time, never shy away from the darkness or what may be lurking in the shadows. We are out. Ha, 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 ha.